We want to look at things as, uh, as scientifically as possible uh, so that we're not just living in fear and, and all things are you know, in two categories, either uh, a poison or saintly. You know, that's not how we want to look at things. Hi, how you doing? The, um, we, want to, uh, we want to be smart about this, and we want to, uh, we want to be like a, I don't know, like a, a, a smart manager of anything. And that is you, you want to put your chips where, where they are. Uh, hi there, come on in. Uh, we want to put our chips where they're most effective. And so I think that the most important uh, place, I think, is to uh, minimize or eliminate animal food. I think that's, uh, that's important. I mm -hmm. think secondarily, uh, anything fried, I think, is a problem. So I think uh, that the oil is heated at high temperature. So when people fry things, I think that's a pretty big problem. The, um, hi, how you doing? The, uh, <clears throat> after that, after that, the, the impact of anything starts to fall off pretty substantially. So, the, so sh sugar, fat, and salt are, ha have our attention because they, they go along with the consumption of a lot of really rich food and a lot that, that come along with a lot of animal food. So, the, um, and, and just essentially denatured, uh, relatively lousy food for people. Uh, it isn't necessarily those chemicals themselves. The oil itself uh, is probably not particularly problematic other than problem for weight, um, but until it's heated. And then when it's heated, it, it becomes more, more chemically problematic. Uh, so it's just a lot more toxic to deal with. The um, same thing with salt. In other words, salt is... Uh, <clears throat> Salt is going to lure us into eating a lot of things that are that are a problem, and uh, and I mean actually when you look a lot a, a lot of the animal food consumption has to do with sugar, fat, and salt. So fried chicken and the stuff that they put on 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 top of the fried chicken, the barbecue sauce and things like that, that's sugar. And then there's the oil that they're frying it in, which is the the fat, and then it's very very salty. So literally, they, they go after all three tastes at the same time. The, um, and so that, that, make, that turns, uh, and of course, that itself is, is rich and alluring enough, but when you put it on top of a very high fat animal food that is really rich calorically in addition, now you have a really, really extraordinary supernormal stimuli that's just, you know, drives a lot of overconsumption that way. Um, it's interesting to note that in nature, it's very unusual to have uh, high fat and, or actually fat and sugar in the same mouthful in an animal. That's just not typical. So the, uh, in humans, the only time that that is going to typically happen is going to be uh, in your mother's milk. So there's, uh, you're going to have lactose along with the high fat. and so. The, uh, the, the fat enhances or super enhances the taste of, uh, of any other underlying taste. That's how it works. So when you have something sweet, which would be the sugar that would be in milk, and then you have a bunch of fat with it, that's a super enhancing process. Essentially what those are is there's two independent pathways into the brain and at the pleasure centers of the brain. One of them are going to be coming through the fat, uh, through the, uh, the fat and another one is going to be coming through the sugar. So when you're independently both activated at the same time, you're essentially having a rare event. And that rare event, I mean, it's a rare event for the, uh, any adult mammal. So it's not, that's not going to be a typical experience for an adult mammal anywhere in nature. The, um, it will be typical for some kitten, okay? And so this is exactly why young mammals stick super close to mom, because they're being in tremendously incentivized by essentially a super normal taste process that you know is signaling to them just how important it is to stay close to get this nutrition. So, um, yeah, once you're weaned, that's it. So there's no sugar in an avocado. Avocados don't taste sweet. Uh, there's no sugar in the steak. So a nice, you know, if you were able to kill an animal and had a lot of fat on it and had a high fat animal, it doesn't, there's no sweet in it, okay? 
uh, there's no fat in, in any fruit, in, in any of that sweet. There's no fat in honey. It's like, whoa. You start looking at the situation and you start realizing, uh-uh. There's no sugar and fat independently uh, in the mouth of an, of an animal at the same moment. So when you, uh, what is a Snickers bar? Okay. Super high fat, super high sugar at the same time. And it's also salty. Okay, so they put a lot of sodium in there. So what they then do is they essentially take, uh, what, what good cooking is, is the use of sugar, fat, and salt. That's what it is, is a way to blend them in combinations along with underlying flavors from uh, other food and to essentially enhance the experience to a supernormal level. That's what it is. So the substances themselves, like the sugar itself, is not particularly harmful. Uh, but it's a but it's super normal. So it's it's doctoring the thing up, okay? And so when you wed that together with high fat foods, um, you, you're now uh, not only is it creating a super normal stimulus, but that the sugar itself is a natural, super concentrated. It's 1,800 calories a pound. So these are ways that that we wind up with systematic overconsumption. Uh, so we wind up with uh, you know, ultimately diseases of dietary excess, but I, I'm not, I'm not uh, upset at all about people putting sugar on their oatmeal. It's like, that's not a big deal. Uh, it's, it's a much more bigger problem if we're putting barbecue sauce on our fried chicken. That's, that's where this really starts to get us into trouble, okay? Same thing with s sodium, salt. In other words, the, uh, the salt by itself in, in principle is no great evil, but it can lure us into a lot of traps. So, uh, you know, an enormous amount of uh, cheese is consumed in the United States. So, as you've seen animal flesh sort of consumption drop over the last couple of decades, it's been totally replaced by cheese. So, the world has gone towards cheese. Um, and so, even as people, as animal rights gets more more um, people be, get more uncomfortable with eating animal flesh, they're eating more cheese. The, um, and what cheese is, is a, an amazing combination of sugar, fat, and salt. So cheese has the, the sugar of the lactose. Uh, it, has the, uh, has, it has the mammal high fat, high sugar content, uh, the, which God knows no reason for human beings to be eating unless you're starving to death. So obviously, perfectly good food if you're starving, but if you're not starving, what are we doing eating this food that was m meant for cattle? And, uh, and then you, they add tremendous high quantities of salt uh, to make cheese. And so now you have a really extraordinary super normal stimuli of sugar, fat, and salt. And you know, that's, that's gonna be a problem. We're consuming essential animal tissue is essentially what you're consuming. And, um, and that's, going to have all the attendant problems.